Welcome Math AI students. These are notes for 4.9 part 2 norm CDF and inverse norm. Let's start off with the essential question. How can you determine the percentage of data that falls between two observed values. Okay. So as a reminder, since this is a video, please feel free to pause. If I'm going too fast, you can get things written down or to rewind to watch things if you didn't catch something. But before we talk um, I really want to talk about inverse norm. That's the big thing today. But before we talk about inverse normal calculations, I just misspelled it. That's an L. What am I doing? Calculations. Uh, we need to learn, um, we need to use our GDC to calculate values that are not whole multiples of the standard deviation. So let me write this and then we'll discuss what that means. So last class, we discussed the empirical rule and you discussed how you could find percentage, percentages or area under a curve within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean, um, which, is, which is great. Um, but the issue now is what happens if we have one and a half standard deviations or what if you have two and a half standard deviations or what do you have a, a percentage? How can you find the area under a curve that doesn't fit an exact whole multiple of the standard deviation? So that's what we're going to do today. Let's jump into an example. It's probably going to be the easiest and best thing to look at. So example one says packets of coconut milk are advertised to contain 250 milliliters. Akshat tests 75 packets. He finds the contents are normally distributed. All right, that's great. With a mean value, or mean volume, I'm sorry, mean volume of 255 milliliters. All right, so actually they're labeled less than what they have. That's, I guess, good. You're getting more for your money. And a standard deviation of eight millimeters. Not milli milliliters, milliliters. I can't speak, I'm sorry. So it says sketch a normal distribution diagram to illustrate this information clearly indicating the mean and the, I'm sorry, this got cut off, the volumes within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. I apologize for that. It must have gotten cut off when I was uh, typing this. So we want, basically we're just gonna take this situation and represent it on the normal curve. And this is something that Ivy's gonna ask you to do. It's a fairly simple process. It might seem silly, but once you've done it, it really brings the information to life and helps you visualize what's going on. So as a reminder, mu or mean is that middle value. Then we're gonna to continue to add one, two, three standard deviations to the right and then subtract from the left. So this line you could say is the mu plus one standard deviation. So we're gonna do lowercase sigma. Uh, this represents mu plus two standard deviations. And then this small one is mu plus three standard deviations. Okay, so mean, one, two, three. And then we need to go, uh, we need to subtract and go left. So we have mu minus the standard deviation, mu minus two standard deviations, and mu minus three standard deviations. But we wanna put this in context of the specific questions. So we wanna put in the values. So I'll label this as 250, Uh, I'm sorry, not 250, 255. It was 250 milliliter containers, but he found out that they actually contain 255. So this is a this would be an error that you'd want to avoid. Okay, so 255. And then we're going to continue to add eight milliliters for the standard deviation. So the next value would be 263. 271. And lastly, 200. 79. And then obviously we're going to subtract to go the other direction. So we have 247, 
239, and lastly 231. Okay, so we've represented uh, this information on this on the spell curve. So that's part that's part A. Uh, but now it says use your GDC to find the probability that a packet contains more than 250 milliliters. And now I think you can see why this is a problem. 250 actually lands right below our mean, but not quite to the standard deviation. The, that first standard deviation below is 247. So it's actually going to be somewhere in here. Like if I draw on this orange line, this represents 250 milliliters. In fact, I can I can label that right here. 250 milliliters. And I want to know what percentage of the data is going to have more than that. So all of this, this is what we want to represent. So what we learned last class isn't really going to help us. We're going to need the use of a calculator. Now it says GDC, um, Graphic Display Calculator. And in this class, remember, we do use TI Inspire. Here's, the, here's one that we, we would use. Um, we're not in class right now. So these are the instructions down here on how to do this. And I will keep them here. Uh, for if we ever get back to campus um, or when we are preparing for your externals, you will need to use them. But in the meantime, you can use this online calculator at mathcracker.com slash normal underscore probability. And I can't bring that up for you right now, but it's actually pretty straightforward. You would go, you go to this website and it asks you just for a few things. You're going to type in the mean. So it asks for the mean. And you would put 255. There's no units on the calculator. Um, they use SD for standard deviation, and we would put in eight, okay? But then there's a couple different options. There's a couple different options here, and what they call this, they call this right tail. So we want to know what's the value to the right of 250. So what you would have to do is you would choose the right tail option, right tailed. And when you go to this website, and you're going to want to do it, you might even want to hit pause right now and investigate it. You're going to select white, uh, right tailed, and then it also says, oh, that means x is greater than or equal to what value? And you have to type that value in. We want to know 250. You're going to type that in. And if you do that, it will give you a, a probability of 0 0.734, and that's the three sig figs. Okay, so that means 73.4% of the packets will contain 250 milliliters or more. Okay, So um, this is very similar to what we did last class, but instead of using whole multiples of standard deviation, now you can start doing partial standard deviations and values in between those whole multiples. All right, so let's move on to the back. And now that we've discussed this and the, and the use of the calculator for it, now we can move on and talk about inverse normal calculations or inverse normal distributions. So there will be times, most likely on exams, you're going to be given the percentage, and I'm, I, I'm sorry, I don't think I made this line large enough, percentage area under the curve. Okay, so what we did, we actually just found that percentage area under the curve. We found that on the last example. Now there'll be times you're gonna do the opposite. They will give you that value Okay, so they'll give you the probability or the proportion. They're going to give you that value, and then they're actually going to ask you to work backwards. They're going to want you to find the value corresponding to it, meaning the x value. So in the last example, I would have given you that, uh, that area, and you would have had to tell me how many milliliters it was. So this is called inverse, inverse meaning you know going backwards, inverse normal calculation. Sometimes called distribution. You're basically working backwards to find values based on area. So things that you need to know before we tackle this, and the calculator is going to do the bulk of the work. That's, that's the great thing about this. Um, always make a sketch. We just did that earlier, the last problem. Making a sketch can really bring the problem to life and, and really represent it in a very visual way uh, to, to help you. Always use the area, and this is true, this is especially when you're using your GDC, always use the area to the left when using your GDC. Now, in regards, that's for the Inspire. With these online calculators, you don't really have to worry about it as much. They do a lot of the work for you. If you're given the area to the right, you, you're going to need to subtract it 
from one or 100%, depending on how you view it. Remember, percent probability is always out um, 100% or between zero and one. How it depends on you're looking at percentages or decimals. And lastly, always have fun. Seriously, you, the camera turned off right now, turn that frown upside down, all right? Have fun. All right, so these, these problems are actually are kind of fun. And once you start to, uh, to practice them and do the, a few of them over and over again, you're gonna start to see a pattern and realize that even though they seem really wordy, once you re realize how to put these into your calculators and what they're asking you to find, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, let's go into example two and then we're done. It says the volume of a carton of milk is normally distributed with a mean of 995 milliliters and a standard deviation of five milliliters. It is known that 90% of the cartons have a volume more than X milliliters. Your mission is to find the value of X, but be sure to sketch the curve. So I've provided you a curve already, so, so that's helpful. But we're gonna, we're gonna put in our information. Remember, this is mu up here, and we're going to add uh, the standard deviations. Um, and you might be thinking, Mr. Boucher, why do you keep making us do this? Um, like we just did on the last one. You gotta practice it, right? You want on the day of an external assessment, you don't want to be lost or confused. You want to be uh, it wants, you want to be very clear about what is expected of you. I always think it's better to put too much than not enough. So now I want to put in my standard deviations uh, of 995 milliliters, and then our standard devi deviation is five. That's that can easily be added in our heads. So this is 1,000 milliliters, 1,005 and lastly, 1,010. And then we're gonna subtract going the other direction, 990, 985, 980. Okay, and if I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow, I mean, this is a video, you can hit pause, you can hit fast forward, and speed up or slow down the speed, it's up to you. Okay, so think about why this is a problem right now. And I'm gonna use a pencil because I'm, I'm gonna erase this. I don't wanna keep it like this. But it says there is some value on here, some X value, some milliliter, that if I drew a line, 90% of the data would be, uh, it says 90% so of the currents have a volume more than that. So 90% of the data to the right of it would exist. Well, I know it can't be the, the mean, logically, because if you think about it, remember, the mean cuts our value directly in half. 50% of the data is this direction, 50% of the data is this direction. So thinking logically here for a moment um, and being deductive, if 50% is over here and I want to find a line somewhere that 90% exists, that line is probably gonna be somewhere over here. Okay, it's gonna be somewhere over here. And I could, I could probably do some estimates, but we're not about estimating, we wanna get an exact answer. So it's gonna be somewhere over here, but where exactly? That's where our inverse calculator comes in. Now. For if you have an Inspire or when we get back on campus, I have those instructions right here how to use it. But um, right now online, we will use this calculator. It's a pretty good calculator. Go ahead and if you wanna hit pause and, and visit it real quick, it might be good to have it up on your screen while I, I go over it with you. But it's gonna ask you for three values. It's gonna first ask you, well, what's the area underneath this curve? That's this percentage right here. Remember area or, or um, probability or percentage. Um, so I'm gonna put area. And you have to write it as a decimal, so 0 0.9. My mean, or mu, is 995. And then the website, I don't remember if it uses SD or if it uses sigma, um, but you're gonna put in five. All right, now there are, there are different options on this because it'll tell you, um, okay, what's the value that 90% of the data is above? What's the value What's the value that 90% of the data is below? So you need to pick the correct one. In this case, you're gonna pick the above option. In this calculator, you don't actually have a calculate button. The moment you click above, in fact, it might even default to above, it'll just give you the value. And in this case, it's 988.592. That's what the calculator online gives us. So if you wanted the three sig figs, you could do 989 uh, milliliters and that's the three sig figs. All right, so if I were you, I would hit pause on this video right now, I would go to the website and I would plug these in and, and experiment with it. So basically what that means is 989 is, is just right here, right? I'm just kind of eyeballing it right here. It's about right here, right below 990, okay? So I just drew it in with my pencil, maybe I should use a, a colored. Um, and 
989 milliliters. That means to the right of this, that's going to be 90% of the data. Okay, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. Uh, from this, from the this is 50% from over here, and if you remember this, the distance, the amount of data that's in between the mu and one standard deviation below is, is 34. So that adds up to 84. So then this little bit more extra that we're adding on is another 6%. It gets us to that 90. All right, so I, I hope this helps. Um, feel free to go visit those websites. It's gonna be really useful. Feel free to come back to this video anytime. Um, and good luck and have fun doing math.